What up brothers, it's Cliff King returning for what I'm guessing is going to be a really long winded video uh, feel free to watch it if, uh, if long videos are not your thing then feel free to bypass it or watch it in segments like I said before we don't all have to sit down and watch an hour long video all in one go but uh, in this country telly can be boring so you can substitute a couple of episodes of Coronation Street and watch your uncle Clipper in action so um, yeah before we start, I'll just make it clear before you start typing out your comments. I know a guy from Sideshow Freaks called Magler's already done a video very similar to this and I've watched it and I think it was awesome. So if he's watching this, respect to him. Uh, I've not stolen his ideas as such, but a lot of the ideas I'll be using are pretty well known and I will be covering some of the ground he covered. Um, I'll start off as well by saying that, as you see, I've got three complete versions of uh, the DX12 Batman. The middle one's mine with the accessories. And then I've got um, this version that came from Barry, which as you can see, I have put a uh, battle length Tony My cape on. And that is the head that come on that. And then mine's now got a Tony My custom head on it. And then, so that's my old head on that one that came from uh, Che Walker as well. So, like I said, I've got three, um, three complete DX12s. During the course of this video, uh, a lot of the custom work I've already done on mine in the middle. But I'm going to show how it looks before compared to one of the standard ones. And then I am going to customise one as I go because I will be keeping two. But then the third one, I will try and leave as standard as possible. I might still do the eyes because I think the eyes is a must. Um, and then the third DX12 will be open to offers. You'll be getting a mint condition one, obviously. If if you want to buy it at a reasonable price, it will be uncustomized. It will be complete, like I say. Uh, the eyes will be painted. But if you want it customized to look very similar to mine, um, and then it'll come with one of the Tony My Capes as well, then obviously it's going to cost a little bit more because you're getting a customised DX12. So, leave your comments. I will attach this to Facebook and Sideshow Freaks, like I said, but over the uh, coming days, uh, if you do want that spare DX12, then let me know, and if a uh, price can be reached, or a good trade, should I say, then uh, I will let one go because I only want to keep two. So, yeah. So let's uh, talk about firstly what I've got on the table. You see some of the tools I'm planning to be using. Obviously cleaning cloths, so I'm going to clean mine as I go. Some small sharp scissors. They are really sharp as well then. Excalibur, my dusting brush. You've all seen it in the repos videos. Note, uh, note removes dust like a uh, quite a fine paintbrush. Small set of tools, I'll not be using all those, only really the uh, needle nose pliers, maybe the tweezers, I don't know, uh, but obviously I won't be using a screwdriver or any of these uh, small sockets. Show you down here, I've got the accessories, uh, just show you these close. Obviously from my set, the frowning mouth is on at the moment, I'll just show you this actually because the lighting's not bad. That is the, uh, sort of the Tony Mai conversion, it is a DX12 head. But it's had all the purrs pulled out and then like a, a, squinting, a squinting set of eyes put in and then the purrs put back in. So you can still move the purrs on that uh, but uh, sort of the surround of the eye has been painted black and it's like squinting. But if I compare it to that one, that is a standard DX head with, let me get closer, just bear with me, it's a bit far away a minute. That is a DX12 head, just with the eye surround painted. So that is my old head. And then this one is completely standard. Where you can see it's a DX12 head and the, the lower eyes are still flesh coloured, making the eyes look even wider. So they're, they're the three heads that I'm showing at the moment. Um, so yeah, I am using, like I say on the middle one, I'm using sort of the angrier face expression, but down here I did get the um, sort of Robbie the Painter rip-off head from eBay, about £10-£11, and it is sort of a copy of the expression 
on the uh, people who are cutting these heads up sort of to get the the lower face section to put into the mask which it's a bit silly if I'm honest because obviously the head goes for about 50 60 pound for you then to like cut it up just to make a good looking Batman where I think you can pick one of these up I will say that one's been I've blackwashed that so the recess of the mouth looks darker than it did when it first come but I will be talking about blackwashing during this video uh, so yeah I picked that up this is the uh, I think it's the Kai or Kia uh, Studios uh, cowl completely empty and it will look nice when uh, Bruce Wayne's holding it in hand it is an hard feeling head sculpt really nice not the soft rubber one and I got that from a guy on Facebook called uh, Vince <laughs> I'm just joking Vince I, met, I fucked his name up in a video I did recently so I'm not going to do it again so yeah that's uh, that's that cowl as you can see these hands came with my original one still got the wristband on I'm going to talk about those shortly so they are standard hands then I've got my spare belt I've got the uh, purse tool all my accessories and then across here just to show you the difference that's the stock cape which is basically shit. It's a bit of a nightmare to put on, although it is doable. I won't be using that. That's the battle length Tony Mike. As you can see, a lot better scale. Even rolled up, it looks better than that one. That one's just too bulky for this scale of figure. That's the battle length because it's quite short. And then obviously another Tony Mike, which is the full length which will sort of trail on the floor and does look really nice pose so that will be on one of the figures and just to show you this one has got a Tony my cape on. I just tried it for the fitting more than anything as you can see really nice cape that is battle length so I will have one of those capes going spare this one's got me dark spartan cape on as you know it's wired and is an awesome cape you see how it curls up it's all wired inside it's got uh, eight wires running through the fins and if you've got the uh, patience to pose it you can get looking fucking amazing so that is what I'm rocking I will say as well at the moment the things I've done so far and the things that I'm going to cover in this video just quickly on mine as I said it's a custom head uh, the armor has me sort of uh, warmed and shrunk around his body if you look at how the shoulder pad sort of stand off that one and then mine are more flush to his body that one's not too bad um, but yeah it's really tightened up the gauntlets have been warmed and opened up the gloves have been cut down uh, I didn't do anything with the boots and I won't be doing and also if I zoom back the neck has been shorted on mine and I'm going to show how to do that for the neck on the one the other one that I'm keeping so to speak so that's the project like I said I think it is going to be long winded but I've got a Saturday off and I'd not plan to do anything so uh, as long as I don't get a fucking house full of people and kids then I'll be able to fire this off pretty quick get it cut and uploaded and then there might be some tips you want to use you might just watch it and think oh, I'm not going to do that to mine or you might want to watch it and think well I'm going to put a cheeky little bid in on that spare one and uh, I've Clipper customising me up. So that is what I hope to achieve. So I'll put a shortcut in here and we'll break it down into the first category that I want to tackle. Right, we're going to start off with uh, gloves. So modifying the gloves and why you do that or why I did it, should I say. I'm not going to say everybody should do this or whatever because it'd be condescending and some people might not want to do it at all. I know everybody got this figure and I know some people are not happy with certain things so I might be telling you things you've seen before I might be fucking I don't know just covering things that you've already done but the reason I'll show you why if you look at my gloves and if you search sort of uh, pictures of the Dark Knight Risers you'll notice that his gauntlet comes right down over his glove where the standard glove came, you see this? So this thing that wraps around top, you don't see it, it's either not there or it's under his gauntlet. Another reason, for functional reasons, when I first got that figure, every time I tried to turn his hand up, 
the length of the gauntlet push the glove off. It used to pop off all the time. See if we'll do it on this. It am, but when you used to pose it, the length of the length of this gauntlet, look, see it's nearly full length at forearm, used to make that fall off really easy. So it were a way to sort of stop that from happening. As well, because of the full length, it made this look very obvious and very spike-like. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to cut down, cut this strap off, file it, and then get it. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend or make that sort of fit over the glove looser. So it sort of looks like that. I'm going to show you what to do. So that is why you do it. It is a movie accuracy thing because it, it does look more like that than that. That's more the Dark Knight. That's more the Dark Knight Rises. So what I'm going to do is got these sharp little sharp scissors. They're like fucking razors them. Very much like surgical scissors. Take this hand and like I say, when I've done all this top bit, so I, can you see where they're the like little fake buckle is just above my thumb that'll all be gone it'll just be and section so there'll be no sort of sort of the ball joint will be the furthest thing forward and then to tidy that up when I've done it just got a coarse nail file it's our lasses not mine as you can see not the fuck all my nails uh, I'm just gonna file it down just to tidy it up so because I can't um, I can't cut that while I'm filming. What I'm going to do is I'm put the camera down. I'm going to cut that off, tidy it up, and then show you uh, what it looks like instead of that hand. So just bear with me. That's what I'm going to do. Right, so to just show this, nice and close, focus, you son of a bitch. As you can see, I was cut round sort of attachment on top of his glove makes his hand about two millimeter shorter than it initially were so i'm just going to snip the last little bit off that little bit and then like i said i'm just going to file i'm just going to file that edging off and make them nice and smooth and not look like they've just been cut down basically so that is what i'm going to do like i said that's how much you cut off just the wrap around the top of its hand Right, so now, like I said, I've cut down a full set of hands. Uh, this is all filings, what I've filed off. And so uh, that's what the hand now looks like. So the strapping's gone all together, which obviously will push further on, uh, which I will show you like for like. Because as you can see, this has got this sort of cuff section or collar section around the glove where this one now hasn't. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop that one off, pop that one on, just to show you uh, the difference in the look. And then I'm gonna move on and show you what I did with the uh, with the gauntlets. So just bear with me. So that's now been swapped out. So we've got rid of this. As you can see, that hand's had it done. That one hasn't. So it does just drop the uh, gauntlet down the arm, probably two millimetres more, making it look more accurate. But to move on from that now and onto the gauntlets, um, on this one, what I did, and I'm going to do it again, to be honest, I basically took both gauntlets off, warmed them. Now, some people warm with a air dryer, um, or I personally warm with warm water or boiling hot water. I warm it, do what I want to do with it, and then straight into cold water. Because then they sort of stretch it or make it pliable, move it to how you want it, and then the cold water obviously um, sets it kind of thing. Obviously, sometimes you have to do it a few times, sometimes it does it straight away. But what I'm gonna do then is, I'm gonna warm that up. I'm gonna show you this in a minute. I'm gonna get the cup of red hot water. I'm gonna warm the gauntlets up. I'm gonna stretch the bottom section so it'll fall down sort of over the glove slightly and then this i'm going to bend in like that now i think what i'm going to do is because i will be keeping both these sets of gauntlets is on mine i'm going to bend it in like that 
on this one, I'm going to take it off completely. Just because if I were to ever sell my Batman, I would be selling it with a second body because I want to set up a, a Bruce Wayne or Bruce Wayne head on the Batman body. So really, if you have got like a quite a, a stock version, I don't think anybody's going to say, well, I don't want to buy it because that one's got the gauntlets missing. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that off on this one and uh, file it down, tidy it up. Uh, and that'll be on the Bruce Wayne version. And like I said, the one at the back, that's going to pretty much stay uh, stay standard unless somebody wants to buy it and have me customise it for them. And like I said, if that's the case, the price will be negotiable. So, yep, yeah, that's the next job. I'm going to get these gauntlets off. I'm going to go and get some red hot water and I'll show you what I do. Right, gauntlets. As you can see, on these gauntlets, I've just... Uh, cut off this section the spike section like I said on my one I'm gonna leave it on but I'm gonna bend it in um, but on this one say so I've cut it off just leaves it a bit rough looking so with the file again I'm just gonna tidy that up a little bit now I'm gonna save these as well because I've seen that you can also just put a little spot of glue on them and put them on the back of the outfit so it's still pretty screen accurate he has still got the elbow pad but it's attached to the suit rather than attached to the gauntlet so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to save them just tie the edges up on that and then if I decide to glue it onto the suit I can do that with some super glue looking here red hot water freezing cold water and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that along the brush like that because then what I'm going to do is when it's warm I'm going to start moving this gauntlet down the brush because as that brush gets gradually wider it'll stretch round here where my fingers go in then obviously what will happen is when I then take it out of the hot water into the cold it will set uh, that uh, as if it's been remoulded and then that end should fit slightly over the glove mine did but it's a while i'm going to do mine again so they sort of like i said so the glove kind of fits inside the bottom of the gauntlet but before i do that i'm just going to file that down and tidy it up right as you can see the warmer it gets the more pliable it is you can sort of get it i've worked it all the way up there which is nearly to the full uh width of the brush Dip it back in hot water. It's quite good because the shape of the handle sort of is the shape of the fist as well. Right, I'm pretty much as far up as it's going to go. So now, tint it cold water, let it set. And then what I'm going to do, take it out, dry it quick, put it on the arm and see if it sort of fits over the, uh, the newly cut down hand. Right, you can see I'm just doing the last one. That's the one with the uh, spike still on end. Just letting that get warm. I'm going to rush it down, stretch it out. These are the ones I've already done. Now, as you can see, look, I've stretched it to the point where now it will hold the fist without it even being on the arm. So when that goes on to arm, that will hold the hand section inside the gauntlet. Just uh, drying off that one. I've done that with the uh, the ones. So I cut the sp I've cut the spike off that one, that one, and that one. So like I said, they're obviously drying and cooling now. And then when they go onto the figure, it will pull down over the hand. So yep, yeah, I'll crack on, get this one done, and then I'll throw them back onto the two figures, and uh, I'll show you what I mean. Right, gloves and gauntlets done. I'll just show you. As you can see now, the gauntlet well down onto the fist as if it's all one part it's not obviously you can still move the uh, hand separately but it now sort of turns a circle inside the gauntlet same with this different sculpt on the hands but it does work with either hand um, like I said as well just show you I did leave the spike on this set this set are now cut off if I wanted to I've kept these. I don't think I will want to, if I'm honest. But if I wanted to, I could just put a little spot of glue on the inside. And then put it somewhere. 
but he's somewhere there on his suit. And then obviously the, the gauntlet would turn independent of where the uh, elbow pad is. I don't think I would, but I know some people do. So uh, it's one of them things, personal opinion or personal preference, whatever. So yeah, that's that. Um, next thing I'm going to move on to is I'll probably get the kettle back on, take it in the kitchen, and then try and get this armour a lot flusher to the arms and a lot tighter on his chest more like that one it's sort of look this sort there's no movement in the pad there it's virtually onto the arm with this one it's a little bit of you can hear it tapping against so what I'm gonna do it's just a matter of warming it right up nipping it in tightening that right round it basically letting it dry or let it cool I'm only using steam, we're not using a cup of warm water because you don't want to soak the whole figure through. So that's what I'm going to do. Bear with me, we'll take it to the kitchen. Right, moving into the kitchen. Sorry if lighting's not the best, it is daytime, but uh, these spotlights aren't amazing. In fact, the lights aren't even on, so it doesn't help at all. Um, as you can see, I've got the Batman stripped right down, I've got his gauntlets off, got his uh, gloves off, got his head off, neck off. Basically, what I'm going to do is. I'm going to let the kettle warm up, get some steam coming through it and warm all the upper body armour, so come in a bit closer Cal. You're basically going to steam the chest area and these pads, maybe the back a little bit but the back doesn't make much difference and then what we're going to do is while it's pliable we're going to nip all the, nip all this onto him so that when it, um, when it cools back down the armour is sort of as if it's as if it's his real life shoulder so it just fits in tighter like my own does now this uh, this sort of modification I don't think it's going to be look awesome on camera but if you were to do this in hand then you notice you do notice the difference it really slims the figure down and makes the uh, makes the armour fit in flush it doesn't seem like it's a separate part to the body piece. So as you can see, the steam coming out of the spout, obviously the steam's red hot, so younger viewers probably ask one of your parents to help you or don't burn your sense doing it, whatever. You're not my kid, I don't give a fuck. So. Look now, look at that. You see how soft and playable that is? Look, it's... Don't feel like hard plastic no more, it basically feels like rubber. Now obviously you've got condensation on your suit, so I found the best way to do it were wrap it in a tea towel but hold it really tight so you can sort of feel the shape of the body around the figure or inside the armour sort of thing. So like now I'm nipping his shoulders as you can see, take the towel off, I'm nipping the shoulders So that I can feel the arms inside, that's how tight. You can manipulate them easy, put them into position. Like look at that already. You see, does that look any tighter for viewfinder? Quite hard to see it. So anyway, you can do it more than once. Like I said, all you're basically doing is steaming the hard chest and the shoulders and maybe the back and then sort of nipping it to his body let it dry let it cool down I'm gonna do it again so zoom in can you see it zoom it already in. I can see I can see with my uh, naked eye that it does look tighter than when I first brought it in but like I said I'm gonna get another blast so again warm it up you know when it's warming off because there'll be condensation on the bits that you're warming up This is one of them as well. Like I said, it, it don't look it don't look a massive thing when you're filming it, I don't suppose, but you get the head back on, you get the chest on, the proportions all look right. So like even there look, see them fins sticking off? You could hold them in place, the chest, push it to the body, or put it to where you want the armour to sit.
and obviously push your shoulders right in. You see what I'm doing? Just holding. So the shoulder pad, the armour, is in flush to his shoulder joints. Same way the chest, probably covering a lot of the same things I'm saying, but I just want you to know how to do it. I've been asked actually about what I did with this first time on mine by some big name collectors as well. And I'm like, well, I can't show you because I've already done it. So it won't make a difference. But with this one, obviously I went from stock to, to tighter. Uh, nah, right, look. You can't really move his, his shoulders no more. His shoulders is flush to his arm. His chest pretty flush to his his chest inside so the armor now feels like it's tailored to the body obviously you push it out still you can still move it but if it does fit flush move it back in and again it comes back to where it's now molded if you're not getting the look you want just keep moving it keep warming it back up keep moving it until it's in a position that either looks screen accurate or looks the best to your eye but that is basically done I'm happy with that it's cooled down it's dry now if I weren't happy then I just keep warming just keep moving it just keep letting it dry and before you know it it'll be nice and tight or it'll look realistic so that is basically how I did the body on mine and how I've now got this one so pretty easy to do have a go at it and see if you think there's a difference cut right chest armor done so just to just to sort of show the point that I've just been trying to make this one was already done everything on mine is pretty much how I want it like I said these nice and tight in there on the thing not too bulky this is the one that's now just been done again it's everything where I want it look no movement on the arms looking nice and tight lovely this is one that's straight from the box and I think you'll notice, let's get the camera, like in there, don't see no loose, uh, no free space inside there. I don't know if the camera's picking it up. No free space inside. Where this one, you can see, you could get your fucking finger inside that bastard. Same in there. So you're taking away that, you're stopping the shoulder look bulky, you're bringing it in. And like I've said, this is the one that's straight from the box. This one's just been steamed, and this is mine that's been steamed about six months ago. And obviously, it's only steam, it's only warm. It's not like you're stripping the paint or whatever. So, I'll probably, before I put that back, I'll probably take it in because this one that's just been done, to my eye, is the better one now of the three. This one I won't do unless somebody wants to buy it and says, customize it, my damn rig, and I'll pay you the extra that you want to customize it. And like I said, then it would have everything done that's going to be done to this one today so yeah I think uh, I think it looks better you guys might not but like I said I'm just showing you the possibilities now we're going to move on to the next section right we're going to roll on and do the neck mod really easy to do really effective and it's sort of one that if you don't like it you can put it back to how it were it's very simple to do again mine has been done now my head is riding pretty high at the moment but because of the mod if I decide to oh, I can't really do this left handed I could have it really low so like there which would be probably the most accurate they're riding pretty high so um, I'll just show you I'll take the heads off and I'll show you the difference in the neck and why this one, I could pull it up if I want and have it as high as those, but I can push it really low down. So basically, the point of his chin would be somewhere down here, but I would need two hands to do it. So I'm going to take the neck pulse out and show you how I've done it. Right, first things first, and you see the difference. That one's, the right hand side one's been modded and he's off that. The left one hasn't been modded, but is now going to be. Um, so you can see that's the difference in height so you've got a couple of things to think about here the the length of the neck and also 
how it sits inside the body. As you can see, inside there, I don't know if I'm not getting light in here, there's kind of a nipple which is probably a centimetre, centimetre and a half high. And you've sort of got to get the neck lower in there. Now there's two things going to stop the neck dropping down. Basically, what the nipple pushes against inside the neck, but also the complete length of the neck, because down at the bottom of there, as you can see, there's the hard plastic, the neck is still going to sit against that. So, you still need to neck, make the neck slightly shorter, even when you've opened it up and took the bung out. So, I'm going to uh, get some tools out, and then I'm going to mod this neck. Just another quick point as well. Like I said, I'm going to hold them because they're magnets, so they're going to pull together. See, there's only like, a millimetre, two millimetre difference. Really easy to do. I didn't use no power tools. If you look now at the bottom, that one's just been sanded down probably a mil, two mil. And also it's been opened and inside this has still got the rubber bong. This one's been taken out. So now I'm going to open this one up and show you what's inside it and show you what you need to take out so that that will either push really low down or you can bring it back up and it'll sit the same as that so then it's just your preference and when you're posing it do you want the neck down low do you want his head really tipped forward or whatever it just gives you a little bit more range so yeah get that one out of the way sorry if I'm filming close but I want to show you some needle nose pliers here and if you look down the side of this there's a seam, you see, all the way down there, then all the way down there. It's basically just two halves being glued together and it's holding some uh, some stuff inside. So, get your needle nose pliers in, like so, because then when you pull them open, you're going to pull the neck open, which is what I'm now Oops. Might be hard to do this for on camera, but all I've got. Go on. Ah, let me just start it off. All right, you see, you get that inside, pull them open like so, and it will split the neck. So the neck is in half. You see at the top you've got the magnet which holds the head on. At the bottom you've got the rubber bung, what the nipple that was sort to of be placed there, and that's what stops the neck dropping down. The fact that the nipple goes into that. So you need to fuck that off, which will give you about an extra millimeter, which obviously is not going to be enough. So what you need to do is, or this is what I did, some people don't do this, but I'm gonna you see this little you see this little ledge here that would stop you from going to all the way down and you've got it on both sides so basically what I'm going to do is with these little tin snips I'm just going to cut it there and fucking magnets come out now Magnet is really strong. And there, take that out. Oh, this is funny. Huh? So I've cut that little triangular piece out. Same on the other side. Cut across. Oops. Cut across there. Cut you little bastard. Fucking hell. There. And that. So you've got the two little pieces of triangular plastic art. And then all you do is push the neck back together. Now if you want to make it extra safe you can glue it but there's really no need because it's pretty tight without gluing it. So that is the first section. Like now, that might go down far enough to make you happy. In fact, let's have a look. A 
put it on. Now the stock one will go down sort of to the, the Adam's Apple V. This one, push it down and it goes slightly lower. Now if that's enough, leave it at that. Let's put the head on and see what it looks like. If you're happy with that, leave it at that. I personally thought that that was still a little bit too high. Ends grinding about a mil off of the uh, off at bottom, maybe a mil and a half. I'm gonna show you how I did it. It's pretty fucking gangster if I'm honest. So I'm gonna take you outside. I couldn't find a good file that would file that plastic down anytime fast. So I'll take you outside and I'll show you what I did. To brought you outside. This is fucking. This is what you call pimping. Uh, P2 introduced me to this. Couldn't find a file, so plastic against brick top. And you're gonna file that down. So just look here. Come on. I want to take about a mil off bottom of that. It'll still hold, but it'll sink lower down into the shoulder. So all I did, got it nice and hard. smell of burning plastic I just keep checking that it's straight so it still sits flush up uh, flush up Take a tiny bit more off at front and I'll tell you why. Let's go inside. Follow me back, boys. Follow me back. Shut the door after you. Bit of pimping for you. That's what Uncle Clipper will gear. Right now, that that brings the length, come closer, in fact, I think you can give me camera now mate, thanks to our Callum for filming that, right, have you zoomed in or out there, don't oh, fuck about with zoom, right then, so, as you see, looks fucking shit, but it still does the trick, I filed it down about a mil, but if you look at it, I've also sort of rounded the front off, that's obviously so that when you put it into his shoulder, it'll go down lower, but you can also tip it forward. You get what I mean? There's nothing to restrict it. So, let's, uh, like this, uh, proof of puddings in eating. Before, when it's that stock, remember? So, that's where the stock one would sit. Now there's nothing to stop this one. It can go right down to there, which is pretty much where I've got mine, I think. Could take another half mil off that if I wanted, but just so that they're different, I've just dropped it in there. Get his head, bend it forward. Look, well done. Kill the neck really forward. So he's got a nice, a nice dip on his face, nice Batman style moody looking fuck but also I can straighten it up and I think I think that one's a little bit too low I might knock that up a touch that one's about right that one's stuck so it's pretty much I, might, I could probably take another half mil off that oh that's it I've not pushed it right down so what Yeah, I think that one is now about right. That one's a little bit low, and that one is a bit too high. So that is the neck mod. And like I say, if you decide you've done it and you think, oh fuck, I don't like that, all you've got to do, open it back up, put the bung back inside, and then the nipple will just only sit in there, which will keep it stock length. So it's not irreversible, this one, but I think it does make a nice difference. 
I'll just show you that, an idea for you that you might want to run with. And now we're going to move on to the head. Right, on to heads, and probably the most important, um, so if the head doesn't look right, the rest of the stuff you're doing is a fucking waste of time. Now, there is some custom jobs out there. I saw the, um, what was it now, monkey, oh, I can't remember now. Monkey robot head, which were basically a, um, a Medicom head converted. I really didn't like it. I like the Robbie the Painter faceplate, which I've seen. Uh, I've seen other bits and bobs and people using different face plates and blah blah blah. There's a lot of variants out there. If you if you have a float around and have a look, uh, you'll find one that you like. Now, this is my head. This is the first head I got. Basically, all I did was um, repainted inside the eyes. Obviously, I didn't paint the eyeballs. But I'll show you. That is stock. You can see the pink lining under the eye. I blacked that out, which is what I'm going to do on that one now. I also, that's mine, what I painted, and I do like. And then in the recent deal I did, I got the Tony Mai converted one, which, like I said, has got the squinting eye mod inside, and it's really nice. I still like. I still like the standard one painted because I think it's enough to make the eyes look dark enough. But this one then goes a step further as well, gives it the more mean scowl look. Probably more accurate that one. But I don't know if they're around anymore. But that's. I would think if I had to pick one head sculpt, that's the best I've seen. Uh, that is a stock faceplate. I have got a better faceplate that, or a faceplate that looks better. But I'm just going to show you that. I'm going to show you. Um, how I paint the eyes, what I used and things to look out for but then I'm also, I've spoke about black washing uh, on a few, I did it on my Wolverine head I've done it on a few other heads and all it basically does is creates like a a dirty like a, a false shadow sort of thing and it, it's an easy process and some people like it some people don't, I'm going to show you how I do it just on a couple of the face plates uh, I'm also going to show you another one I use um, I made, which heads did I make look sweaty, I can't remember now. Oh, the Indiana Jones, I give a sweaty appearance, and the Wolverine, I give a sweaty appearance, because I think some of these figures, the, the paint jobs are awesome, but they're a little bit flat looking, I think, especially the Wolverine, the expression on his face dictates that he's in action, so I would think that he would have a sweat. I know they did like a sweat effect on the uh, Bruce Lee figures, and that looked really good, but they don't do it in general. So I'll get set up and we'll have a look at some repainting. Right, onto a bit of paintwork. To show you, I've got this uh, acrylic paint. I use acrylic because you can sort of mix it down to nearly water. And also, if you if you do something and you're not sure, you can just damp a cloth, wipe it off. Um, and also when you've painted it, it's quite powdery, so if you get any overspill somewhere, you could just get something sharp and scratch it away. So it's it's pretty much paint for beginners sort of thing. It does, uh, it is permanent, so it doesn't flake off unless you, like I say, you're trying to scratch it off or whatever. Um, so yeah, that is what I use. So I just use a bit of paint. Obviously we're not going to need much, so just a little blob of black paint. And we've just got some water in there, and then I don't know how I'm going to do this, but get a bit of water just to wet a part of your plate where you can mix it down, make it really watery for when I want to do some black washing. Now, I'm going to do it with that first because obviously I'm, I am using a tiny, tiny brush to do the. Uh, underside of the eyes and surrounding the eyes um, but what I'm going to do instead of just using a, a neat paint I'm going to do it like that in case I make any mistakes and then layer it and layer it and layer it until it comes out looking like the eyes on that one now I'm just thinking I'm going to do this on camera I ain't got a fucking scooby doo to be honest but then what I'm going to do as well I'm going to black wash one of these and show you how I do it and I think I'm going to black wash 
and sweat it up one of the Bruce Wayne heads. So that's what I'm going to do. Nah, you know, fucking Scooby Doo, I'm going to do it. Probably have to get tripod out here or whatever and find a way to do it for you. I will say, in the meantime, as well, I've just been transferring some um, some of the files off of the camera onto the computer because it's an 8 gig camera and I think I'd already record about 7.9 7 gig or something, so it will flash in to let me know. While I'm waiting for that to transfer, I just put the belt on and put the, uh, the long flowing length Tony My Cape on that. So in a minute I am also going to show you how to fit that because I know a lot of people have problems with this stock cape but I'll just show you how easy these uh, Tony Mize capes are to do. <clears throat> so yeah, oh you can see that fucking Batman's looking better already. So we've only done a few little things but I just think it's an improvement over sort of the stock one at that side but right let's see what I can do let's see if I can show you uh, our paint right so I've got it set up best I can I can't do it over my shoulder because it, it won't show you everything I need it to so I've pretty much got the camera set up on the toolbox on top of the table so it's in sort of an area where I feel comfortable sort of painting the underside of the eyes if I get to a point where I need to get closer and I go out of shot you're going to have to forgive me but Basically, when you first start, like I said, that is a stock head, you can tell with the eyes. Take the faceplate off, just stops it from getting in your way and it allows you to grab the head like that. Uh, and get the purrs and put them all the way so they're looking up. The simple reason is, I'm going to be painting this, I've got quite a steady hand. But if I was to sort of have a splash or smudge onto the eyes, get something I use it like a cocktail stick and I can just scrape the paint away from the eyes to clean it back up but also because the eyes are up you're really doing the lowest part of the eye so you position the eyes any smudges you're not going to see them anyway because they're going to be sort of rolled back down in bottom of the head so it's just something to think about but anyway I showed you the paint I use don't want to get shit loaded on brush and like I said it is pretty watered down um, but uh, yeah let's have a fucking blast don't want to overload the brush let's have a look what we can do I hope I'm in shot I don't think you're going to see the the full uh, extent of what I'm doing but I'm just paint, basically painting over the pink with the black just to uh you're darkening the eyes obviously but what you're also doing is you're creating creating the illusion that his eyes are more closed than they really are which is basically one of people's biggest nitpicks with this figure is that uh, his eyes are too open got googie eyes sort of thing sorry if I'm not talking so much but I am really concentrating because I don't want to fuck this up I don't want to have to start fucking scraping away. I don't want to start scraping away the fucking paint that I've put on. So I'm being really steady. I'm doing pretty good. And we've got to get in all these little nooks and crannies but not go on the white eyeball so that's one done and like I've explained as well this is this is now the third this is the stock head so none of my Batmans now will have unpainted eyes so if you were to pick up the one that's pretty standard the eyes are still done so it saves you guys having to do it I've been asked before people can they send me my eyes and I'll just touch them up and I'm like well you can if you want but to be honest I don't want to I don't want to make it a fucking business and I don't want to do them for free so it's a funny one if people were desperate and they wanted them doing and I ain't got a steady hand I would soon have somebody else do it then I'd do it but so I don't want to 
not on a fucking 30 Batman head sculpts turning up every week. And to be honest, there's a lot better painters out there than me anyway, so you could probably get them done by somebody. This might be the most boring section of video you've ever seen in your fucking lives, but it's quite, as you can see, they look better already. I'm just making sure all pink's gone. They're looking nice and shiny black. Looking fresh as fuck. And looking beastly. That is a fucking good job by Uncle Clipper, even though I'm on camera. Right, so moment of truth. I've put it on. But I'm only going to see if I've got it on eyeballs by moving the purrs around. So before I move that around... I just let the paint dry because if it's still wet, there's a chance that it is going to smudge onto eye. Right. So, I'll start moving it. If I see that there's any black lines or marks on the eyes, which I can see already, with a. Oh, shitter. Where's my thing? My little scraping thing. Who's that? my little scraping tool which would normally be a wooden cocktail stick and I clean it off but that's worked just as well obviously I've just been using the edge of the sharp scissors so if that's the case and that's what you use don't do it too hard because you don't want to scrape the paint off the eye. So all the way up, all the way down. There were just one line. I've got that off. So now I go back to your start position. Go all the way. All the way left. None on. All the way right. Come on. A couple of little bits there. Like I say, no, because the glassy nature of the purrs, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't hold acrylic really well. Where the sort of porous plastic of the surrounding eye, it does take really nice. Oh, that's a fucking job well done, Rick Bates. Like I said as well, don't go fucking your Batman heads up, boys, just to do this. If you think that you're not... If you think you're not going to do a good job of it, I'd suggest leave it. You've already got a fucking awesome figure. These are just for the people who just aren't satisfied and just need to go that step further. That, my friend, is what they call... Done, me thinks. Let's have a little move round. Oops. Clean. Clean. Fucking beautiful. The eyes back to centre. Now then. <clears throat> Another set of eyes. Done. So pretty easy. Just need a uh, just need a steady hand. So it is doable. If you'd sooner not attempt it, then I would say don't. If you don't trust yourself, don't do it. I do because, I, like I said, I'd already done the other set, so I know how to do it. Uh, that's another set done. So, like I said, bear that in mind. If you do want to buy this third Batman, the eyes will be coming like that. Right. So that's the eyes done. I will go back and show you in detail in a minute, but uh, I want to crack on and get these other bits and bobs done. Right, now, black washing. Like I said, I'll explain what I'm doing when I, I do it. And it's, it's a really simple process. And you're basically just dirtying up your sculpt and hoping that some of the black settles in the recesses of the sculpt sort of thing. Um, I think it adds uh, 
sort of a touch of realism some people love hot toys paintwork anyway and i do as well but it's just sort of a little step i take where i'm not really going to fuck the figure up but i'm also going to make it a little bit individual so um, this is why i do it now basically with black washing all you're trying to get is some get plenty of water on this plate so the plate's fucking soaked and then you're just gonna mix it in so you've got some really really nice look hardly out on it's just like black water really and then what i'm gonna do i'm gonna put camera down and we'll cross uh give the uh one of the face plates a little wash with it and then with a tea towel i dry away the raised sections and i'll try and demonstrate that like i've just done with the painting so that's my mix just get set up again. I'm going to do my own angry face. Again, bear with me. You might want to watch this in fast forward. So all I do, you basically colour the face in with like a really, really washed out black paint just cover it and it just looks first time you do it it'll look sort of like that but just move it around and try and get it into any creased areas sort of in the mouth area the areas where his like his skull shows and things like that See what I've done? So it's just a matter of doing that. And then, just let it dry a bit. And then just lightly with a towel. Luckily our tea towels are black, so they don't, when I've fucked them up, our last don't really notice. And then all I'm doing is very lightly, just brushing past it. Because it should leave I don't know if you can pick this up. In the mouth area, and can you see where the lines are? It's sort of giving him sort of more definition, more defined in the creases and along the inner part of the lip because the fact of the matter is, when you brush past it, all you're really doing is dragging the paint or drying the paint off the raised sections. Again, if that's not strong enough for you, you're not going to hurt it if you get another blast. Maybe put a bit more paint into water to thicken it up. And then, even if you wanted, you could fucking go mental and paint it all black like that. Because like I say, in a minute, it's all going to be off, so it doesn't really matter. And if you fucked it up, just chuck the face plate in the... Chuck face plate in some um, water. You can just take the paint straight off. Like I said, that's a beautiful bit of acrylics. Wash it back down there. You saw how thick I put it on. Look, look at his face now, it's fucking black. And the towel again. It's gonna dry my fucking fingers off. And then just sort of dry across it. I just hope the camera picks it up like it, uh, how it is in real life see it's dirtier again now I don't know if that's showing but it is like I say you let it dry or you let it sink in that bit longer then you get the uh, better effect now another tip when you're doing the face plates I think that one's done about enough so the one that I've just <clears throat> like I said this is the one I've just done the eyes on looks fucking ten times better if you ask me Put the face plate in, and a good tip is I'm going to blackwash it again. But what you're going to do is only sort of go between the face and the mask because I think when you sort of dry it down, it makes it look more like. It's not a stuck on face plate, 
that it is a face coming through a mask because what's going to happen here is sort of the areas where there's nothing like right in the cracks the black paint's going to stay in them areas but you're going to have dried it off the others so if you look you see what I've done black wash brown edge because then when I dry it like this Because my thumb's skimming across it, it's leaving paint in the recesses between the face and the mask. If there's any way you think it's too thick, I just wet the corner of that and scrub it away. Remember, like I said, if you're not happy with it or you think you've gone too far, Chuck it in some water, clean it, start again. You see you get an effect like that. Mm. Right. So. So that now is what I would consider a customised head. Uh, and I think it does look nice. Quite a good job of that. I don't know what you guys think. Oh, like I said, and if I don't if I didn't want that on, I've got a little bit too much under his nose, if you ask me. So what I'm gonna do is I'll take the face plate out and just dry a little bit of that away. Or wash a little bit of that away. To get his lips really good definition as well, this because the what sort of sunk away from his lip area. So that is not a bad job. If you hear me start talking really sort of quietly or deep, it's because I'm thinking as I talk, sort of thing, or I'm more talking to myself. But anyway. So that's it now, what I would class a customised head. Eyes are painted, it's had one of the um, one of the face plates. Obviously, again, I've got to stress, this is my own head, uh, face plate, so if you didn't want one painted, you wouldn't be getting that. You'd be getting a clean version. Unless you asked me for it to be customised, then I would do that for you, but obviously, that would make the figure more expensive. Right, so that's going on to the stock head. Now then... <clears throat> What I'm going to do now, I'm going to sort of move this on. I'm going to do all the Bruce Wayne head with the same principle. Like this is only going to be a light wash, just sort of to uh, darken the recesses. Really, it's not going to be as fucking thick on as the last one. But I'm going to do it and then dry it down. But then after that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix it with the air spray, which will give the face kind of um, a sweaty look kind of thing so what I'm going to do is basically wash it on like I say I'm not going to do or I'm going to avoid the eyeballs because the eyeballs are an absolute bastard to get the paint out of so I'm just going to paint all his head as you can see just makes it look like it's fucking hacky like his face is caked up with mud. You best off, I always think, getting right up into his nostril because that's where the paint will stay because you've got no way of drying it off. Right into his mouth. So again, the uh, that's where it will stay because you can't get to it to dry it off. Cracks of the ears and everything like that basically cover his skin with his black wash like I said a lot of people definitely won't want to do this because they do love the uh, the Hot Toys paint jobs and like I've said so do I it's just that I personally don't give a fuck so I'll have a go at all really wash it on So I, I do like to get sort of the grooves under the eyes but not the eyeball because it sort of it ages it and it gives it like a, a washed out look I did it on the uh, 
right, the Punisher figure and it gave him that sort of sleepless nights look and I thought it just fit the figure really well. So anyway, I've done the wash, I've done as much as I want to do, get it into the cracks where the skin meets the air, and then put it in the towel, let's dry it off, see what we get. Oh yes. A little sneaky glance and I do like that. If you have any big any big areas where it's either too obvious or I don't know like a, a clump or water paint or whatever, like I say, all I do just dampen, dampen the corner of the cloth and sort of wash it away or fade it down or whatever. So I kind of like that now, I mean. It's got like a manner action look about it. it looks like he's, looks like he's uh, been down pit. Done a shift out pit, that's what it looks like. I say it just drew it, takes his cheeks in a little bit because it's it's giving his face more tone sort of thing. Um so yeah, that's what I've done. Now nah. there's a couple so I'm happy with that. I'm happy with for this head. Now nah. moving on. Airspray. There's two ways that you can do this, and it's either I'll pick this up. It's got to be airspray. And this the reason I use this is again, airspray is basically a really fine glue, a compressed glue sort of thing, watered down and fucking. It still gives like the shiny appearance when it's sprayed onto this, um, and it also fixes the paint that's on here. So once once you've sprayed it, your paint that you've left on is pretty much permanent. So you can either hold the head and spray past it, or you can spray onto the plate, give you send a little pool of, of glue or air spray or whatever, and then use the brush to paint that on. Now what I'm gonna do is, just to show you, I'm gonna sort of, I'm gonna sort of aim this over here, and I'm gonna show you what I'm going for. With. Don't get the can too close because then you're just going to get a massive build up of fucking. Hang on, a bit too much glue on no, A bit too much paint on his eye, I'll just in it. I'll get that off because I won't be able to after it glues on. So, yeah, getting far away. If you look, his face has got a really pasty look about it. But some people say it makes it too shiny. I like it because when I put it in the cabinet, when the light hits that, it gives the face sort of wet and dry areas, which I think catch the light really nice. I mean, I use this as well on the Michael Jackson's hairs to make them look really shiny. I think that's enough. Normally, I would go a little bit further than that, but I think I've just about got a right amount on there. So, yeah. So that is basically black washing. Uh, camera battery is going, so I will uh, we'll sort this out. And get that in light. Just darken it up. Get the uh, glossy spray down. That's how I like it. Again, some won't, but I do. Um, so I think. That's about it. And I know before anybody puts in some comments, I know there is a mod where you can make the ankles bigger, you can pad them out and everything. I didn't like that, so I didn't do it. I know that you can get the bodysuit off underneath, and I weren't, I didn't really want to try that. I think you would gain in articulation, but you would lose in bulk. So I didn't want to do that one. So the things I've showed you are all the things I've done. 
Uh, I'm happy with them. Like I said, I've explained there will be a spare Batman up for grabs, customised if you want it. But other than that, that's pretty much all Clipper's got to show you on this occasion. Uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Hope even if you don't try it, you find it interesting. Um, if you've got any questions or comments, uh, get in touch with me as soon as possible. If you want to make an offer for that third Batman, then please do. We can talk about a price, but obviously if it's a few and you want it customised or a few and you want it uncustomised, then it's going to go to highest bidder. Um, shipping in England will be about £12. Shipping to America, sorry to tell you, is about $55. So bear that in mind. Uh, but for now, like I said, that's mine. That's the one I've customised today. The eyes are done. I've repainted the eyes on that one. Took the chest in, the shoulders, the gauntlets, cut the hands down. And that's about it. Put on the cape, which is really easy to do with these Tony My capes. If you can get older one, do so. It's just a matter of on the top corner, got a plastic tag, and that just drops down in the hole. It's a lot easier than doing the uh, the Hot Toys ones. That's it, it's on. So this one's the uh, long version cape, looking sweet. That's the Dark Spartan cape, looking sweet. And that's the battle version of uh, Tony's cape. And that's only to that length. So I'm now going to get my uh, poles set up, get the stuff boxed up that I'm not going to be using. There will also be some spare items up for sale, I'll do that through Facebook, and then there will, like I said, be a complete Batman for sale. But boys, talk to me, and talk to me as fast as you can, because you know Clipper, don't hang around. So there's not much left to say, other than, this is the Clipper King Brothers, thanks for watching all this time, and I'm out of here.